did so many American and Soviet attempts to reach Mars fail? What was the strange elliptical object photographed by a Russian probe just before it disappeared? Is someone or something working to prevent us from learning the whole truth about this amazing image on the Martian surface? Would the billion dollar Mars observer have been able to give us the answers if it too hadn't disappeared? Discover the Earth-Mars connection in this chapter of UFO Diary. The planet Mars is next to our own, the fourth world counting out from the sun, barren, perpetually cold, and with a thin atmosphere of poisonous gas. Surely no intelligent life could survive there. The surface of Mars, we now know, is covered with meteor craters, gigantic mountains, and deserts that reach around the entire planet. And one thing more, a giant sculpture that many scientists now speculate was created by some unknown race of intelligent beings. And if it is what it appears to be, what does that have to do with Earth? Mars is our nearest and most reachable galactic neighbor, but for some as yet unexplained reason, trying to study this planet has met with failure after failure. Beginning with two attempts by the Soviets in 1960, both missions mysteriously failed. After the problems the Russians had getting their probes to Mars, the American scientists started to joke among themselves about some great galactic ghoul that was uh, preventing our missions from getting there too. In November 1964, the Americans launched the Mariner missions to Mars. But as, as it approached Mars, Mariner 3's camera shroud failed to open, making the camera useless. It does indeed seem that missions to Mars have met with an unusually high failure rate. But in July of 1965, the American probe Mariner 4 finally brought success and completed the first flyby of Mars. So had Earth scientists at last outwitted the galactic ghoul? Apparently not. When the Soviets then attempted to actually land a probe on Mars, something astonishing happened. Everything on the Mars probe seemed to be working perfectly, and then it just shut off. Could it be that there is something out there that's interfering with Earth's efforts to conquer space? Or is it all just an incredible string of coincidences? Whatever the reason, it was five years before the United States made another attempt to reach Mars. But in 1976, the Viking probe began sending volumes of images back to Earth from their orbits above Mars, including these. Encouraged by the success of the Viking probe, the Soviet Union, with international cooperation, uh, launched a a set of satellites in 1988. Phobos 1 never even made it to the planet. At some point it just disappeared. Uh, Phobos 2, the uh, probe that was sent up to look at one of the moons of Mars, apparently encountered something very strange of which the Soviets had a picture that did surface in the United States. Of a very massive elliptical shape uh, object. Uh, the NASA individuals here that may know about it, of course, would never make a comment on it. And then it too disappeared. And five years later, the American space probe Mars Orbiter seems to have met the same fate. But what exactly did happen to them? Many researchers now believe the loss of so many Mars probes cannot be an accident, but a deliberate attack on spacecraft from Earth by something or someone near Mars that does not wish to be photographed. Could this be true? Has this bizarre string of space disasters occurred because we caught a glimpse of something we were not supposed to see? Has the Viking space probe presented us with a mystery that is unsolvable? The mystery first began to unfold in 1976, when the unmanned Viking space probe was going about its highly successful mapping mission of our neighbor planet. When the images that were transmitted back to Earth began to be analyzed, this surface feature in the region designated as Sidonia caught the attention of people all over the Earth. The initial official re reaction from NASA about this photograph is that it was just a trick of chance sunlighting. Certainly no one believed that there was a, a huge carved face on the surface of Mars. Besides, who could have made such a thing? Uh, no one believes in the science fiction version of men on Mars. 
and we know that Mars is not capable of supporting intelligent life as we know it. So the idea of this being a creation of intelligence was uh, not even considered by NASA. Despite all of this, when the image was first recorded, it was labeled head. But fortunately, the story doesn't end there. The picture caught the eye of image analysis experts Vince DiPietro and Greg Molinar. DiPietro and Molinar undertook the colossal task of discovering what the strange picture really showed. At, at first, they just enlarged the photo and, and uh, considered there was nothing there at all. So uh, Vincent DiPietro and I uh, designed a computer program to enhance the image uh, in much more detail than NASA had done. And even though their new process resulted in images as convincing as these, NASA apparently continued to insist that the image was nothing more than a trick of the light. And to prove it, they said that Viking had photographed the same area from a different angle and that there was no face visible in the second photograph. Then we went through the archives to see if there was any other satellite passes over that same area. Uh, NASA said there wasn't at first, and uh, we looked through their archives and found one. And there, just as before, there was a face with a higher sun angle showing more detail than before. And images of the eyes showed pupils and of the mouth area showed teeth. We were very impressed. Now there were two photographs of the head. Was this proof the image was built by intelligent beings? Did this second photograph solve the mystery? Or was it only the beginning of an even greater puzzle? A puzzle with one of the most important pieces found on Earth. These two separate frames, identified by their NASA frame numbers, 35A72 and 70A13, also contain considerable detail about the surrounding area, revealing several other images that DiPietro and Molinar found as exciting as the mysterious face. About 10 miles away from the uh, face is a couple of pyramids. Uh, and the strange thing about those pyramids is uh, they're very regular triangular shape. And in the corner of each corner, there appears to be a buttress. And uh, on close examination, the, the buttress itself is pyramid shape. Was this undeniable proof that an intelligent race had once lived on the planet Mars? This would be really, really remarkable for this to be a natural formation. Since the time of that discovery, science writer and consultant Richard Hoagland has worked tirelessly to discover the whole truth about the mysterious Sidonia region of Mars. A member of our team, Dr. Mark Carlotto, decided to use a state-of-the-art 3D computer modeling technique which now strongly indicates that the face could in fact be a real three-dimensional human-looking sculpture, a sculpture 1,500 feet high and over a mile long. But is it not still possible that these intriguing shapes are really nothing more than accidents of nature? that the researchers who study them are simply letting their imaginations run wild. Many intriguing questions are raised by the apparent connections between this image from the planet Mars and ancient structures here on Earth. Perhaps the most intriguing being, does this image on the surface of another planet give us important clues to the origins of ancient structures on our world? Richard Hoagland's study team may have uncovered proof one of our oldest relics was not built by human hands. And as I began looking at some references and books and talking with colleagues, this was a sketch done by Shannon, one of our early artists on the team, we, we both realized that this image was somehow trying to tell us something profound. It was trying to say this. Could the resemblance between the face at Sidonia and the Sphinx at Giza be more than a mere coincidence? And if not, does all this prove once and for all that these great monuments were all designed and built by an intelligent race from another world? Did the Egyptians, in fact, as we know them, do this remarkable structure? Recent archaeological and geological discoveries demonstrate that the Sphinx is at least 10,000 years old and maybe even older. That is, the Sphinx appears to be much, much more heavily weathered than we have any right to expect from only, quote, 5,000 years of desert weathering. 
The kind of weathering we see on the Sphinx is best explained by the action of running water. You need rain to get that degree of erosion, 12 feet of it in some places. And that amount of rain has not fallen in Egypt for at least 10, maybe 15 or 20,000 years. Now that raises a wonderful problem. It means that we're now looking at a monumental work of art created at a time when nobody else on planet Earth is supposedly able to do anything of that magnitude or scale. There's no other contemporary civilization to pin it on. So who did it? Could these both be ancient sculptures made by the same race of beings? If so, who or what is this face intended to represent? The key to understanding the face on Mars may lie in the fact that the Sphinx of Egypt is a combination of hominid and feline, half man, half lion. It was at this point that we began to worry less about the ultimate reality of the so-called face on Mars and more about the meaning of the message of Sidonia. Hoagland's researchers, in comparing the two images, made an amazing discovery. Half lion. Maybe there's a connection. Maybe the face of Sidonia is half man, half something else. Half First, human. they copied the left half of the Sidonia head, made a mirror image of it, and pasted it onto the other side. That's the Simeon half. The results were interesting, but inconclusive. However, when they tried the same thing with the right half, flipped it over and matched it up on the left side, the result was a clear image of a lion's head. Are these merely strange optical illusions, or are they the key to understanding the real truth behind our own past? Surely it's still possible that mere coincidence could be the culprit behind all of these so-called connections between monuments of Earth and the images we've seen from Mars. Or is there any more and better evidence? In southwest England, the ancient man-made mountain of Silbury Hill has loomed over the horizon since time immemorial. Nearby is Avebury, believed to be a fortress centuries old, tall earthen walls protecting an inner mound. The area also contains an amazing connection to the structures at Sidonia. The connection here was determined not by simple observation and supposition, but was founded in the solid facts of geometry. The question was, what if the ancient ruins in England corresponded in size, shape, and dimension to the features on the plain of Sidonia? What if the Avebury Circle was to represent the crater and Silbury was to represent the tholus, and the angles and positions of ancient features, including where the cliff would be, and where the tetrahedral pyramid would be, and angles to other key things in this vicinity, all seem to match, including the very size of Silbury Hill in terms of its exterior uh, moat in reference to the tholus. Were all of these structures built by the same race of beings? human or otherwise? And if so, does this constitute new evidence that intelligent life could have once thrived on the planet Mars? Richard Hoagland suggests many possibilities. Uh, one is that we had a previous high-tech civilization on Earth which developed spaceflight, went to Mars, built some stuff, and then collapsed. And we're now just rediscovering our heritage. The second hypothesis is that someone else from far out there, from the stars, thousands, hundreds of light years away, came to the solar system, came to Mars, built the stuff, and built a monument to this primitive being that would someday become a human being, the human species, here on Earth. In either case, it would seem that some global catastrophe forced the Martian population to abandon their world and move to another, to the Earth. And someday, we may discover, in fact, that we are the Martians after all. Assuming for a moment that there once was a flourishing race on Mars and that they built this complex structure, one important question remains. Why? Sidonia was probably constructed to communicate some very fundamental information. We believe now that we are looking at the outlines of a whole new physics, how the universe functions, a kind of a grand unified theory, as it were, given to us, communicated, even on the photographs taken by Viking, 
by the geometric layout of the structures. Researchers now believe that the key to understanding the geometry of the DNM pyramid may be in the size, shape, and position of the massive structure. Hoagland and others point out that the pyramid is not oriented to the Martian North Pole, but is turned slightly to one side. Latitude lines show that two of the faces are out of alignment at exactly the same angle, 19.5 degrees. Why 19.5? That on every major and minor planet that we have flown by, looked at, or mapped in the last 30 years through NASA imagery, the major disturbance, starting with Jupiter and the Great Red Spot, lies just about at 19.5 north or south. The Great Red Spot on the planet Jupiter is essentially a giant cyclone an atmospheric storm larger than the entire planet Earth. It continues to churn away for year after year, right at 19.5 degrees south. Hoagland asserts that on every planet in our solar system, there does seem to be some kind of major geological or atmospheric disturbance found at 19.5 degrees north or south including our own gigantic volcano, Mauna Loa. Colossal power rages up from the center of the Earth, emerging in the Hawaiian Islands at 19.5 degrees north. Does this suggest that the builders of the DNM pyramid recorded in its structure a sort of key to the inner nature of every planet in our system, including our own? According to Hoagland, the builders of the monuments at Sidonia had a reason for leaving the number 19.5 encrypted in a pyramid. This is a four-sided, four-cornered object termed a tetrahedron. Because if you put this structure in a sphere, it predicts some remarkable phenomena. Hoagland says that if a perfect tetrahedron or pyramid is placed inside a sphere such as a planet so that one tip is at the north or south pole, the other tips will fall at the latitudes of 19.5 degrees north or south, the same as the angles discovered in the DNM pyramid. Was this giant tetrahedron built on the plains of Sidonia to help future generations understand the sources of power within their own planets? If these discoveries truly are the long-awaited proof that there once was intelligent life on another world, would it not seem reasonable that we try to get a closer look at the Sidonia region of Mars? On September 25th, 1992, one of the most sophisticated space probes of its kind was launched into outer space. The Mars Observer was designed and programmed to approach, photograph, and carefully study the red planet in far greater detail than ever before. Then on August 21st, 1993, at precisely 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the radio signals from the Mars Observer stopped. The Mars Observer probe, over 17 years in the making at a project cost of nearly $1 billion, had gone silent, suddenly and completely. But why? Was there a simple malfunction? Or is there more to the mystery than that? The Mars Observer mission may have been doomed before it even left the ground. Hurricane Andrew hit the coast of Florida just about the time the uh, Mars Observer was being prepared for launch. Even though it had been prepared for such an onslaught, technicians checked the probe to make sure that it had not been damaged by the storm. The nitrogen system was equipped with special filters to prevent such uh, uh, dust and debris from being taken into the system, and the cameras were in a separate compartment. In spite of this, bits of paper and dust and debris was found in both compartments. It looked like someone had uh, swept the floor and taken the dustpan and dumped it in those compartments. It's unlikely that Hurricane Andrew would have been responsible for all of that damage. But if not the hurricane, then who? Why would anyone wish to sabotage a photographic expedition to Mars? Could this be because someone or something doesn't want us to get a closer look at our neighbor planet? And if that's true, what is the secret they're trying to protect? There are many experts now who believe that the forces protecting a secret on Mars may not be on the red planet, but here on Earth. 
Since the first television cameras flew with space missions in the mid-1960s, NASA has always shared its video images with the world. But many sources report that just before the launch of the Mars Observer, NASA announced that for the first time ever, they would not allow any images sent back from Mars to be broadcast on live TV. Why? Why would the National Space Agency suddenly change a policy that had stood for almost 40 years? Had they learned something about Mars that they wouldn't admit? NASA has had a long, uh, very close relationship with the Department of Defense. Uh, so they have been, I believe, under a lot of national security restrictions. And there is very much uh, evidence, I believe, of backtracking and coyness on behalf of NASA and their involvement with UFOs. Like all government projects, if they don't have an answer, they don't want to be embarrassed. So I th they keep everything secret until they know more about it. The Mars Observer might have given us definitive answers to the question of intelligent life on Mars, and it might not have. But as of now, the Mars Observer appears to be lost somewhere in the vast reaches of space. Could it be just the latest victim of the galactic ghoul? Or is there some other explanation? Stanley McDaniel, author of the McDaniel Report, believes there is a very practical really explanation. But um, some people have speculated that um, NASA uh, is afraid that it'll lose funding if it uh, even so much as hints that it might imagine that there are extraterrestrial artifacts on Mars or elsewhere in the solar system. Uh, I think they believe that Congress would think this was so far-fetched that they would withdraw funds. There are still so many questions left unanswered. Is this face just a natural formation? Or was it constructed by some long-lost civilization? And what of the pyramids of Mars? Are they ancestors of the pyramids of Egypt, or just uniquely shaped piles of frozen Martian soil? Is the perfect geometric precision found in these surface features of Sidonia nothing more than a bizarre series of coincidences? Could it be that we are descendants of ancient Martians who sought refuge from their own dying world? If so, does that mean that we are the Martians we claimed we might someday meet? As scientists plan future manned missions to the Red Planet, are we on the verge of learning that Mars is not only our destination, but was also once the beginning? Is this a portrait of the being who long ago made the very first entry into the UFO diaries? Have U.S. astronauts found proof of UFOs only to be forbidden to tell us what they know? Have probes to the planet Mars captured photographs that we are not allowed to see? Do these videotapes reveal a terrifying truth that NASA has kept hidden from the people of Earth? Astounding images from other worlds and the long-kept secret they may uncover in this chapter of the UFO Diary. The official history of space travel begins in 1961, when cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin blasted into Earth orbit aboard the Vostok 1 space capsule. Soon after, Alan Shepard flew an American Mercury capsule into space, and the so-called space race officially began. Five, 35 years ago, U.S. President John F. Kennedy encouraged the American space efforts to set their sights on a seemingly impossible goal. We choose to go to the moon. Landing a manned spacecraft on the moon before the end of the 1960s. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And in July of 1969, that goal was in fact achieved. The space race had been won. And the real winner was the organization that had made it happen, the American Space Agency, NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. So to many people, it had always seemed logical that if humankind were to ever find proof of another intelligent life on other worlds, that discovery would certainly be made first by NASA and immediately shared with the rest of the world. And for a time, at least, it seemed that astronauts did report frequent encounters with UFOs. In fact, astronauts have apparently been reporting UFO sightings from the very beginning of manned spaceflight. The first Russian in space, Yuri Gagarin, came back and said, I know these things are real. Um, they exist. They have incredible capabilities. I'll talk more about it if given the permission to do so. To my knowledge, he wasn't given permission to do so. And some of the Americans, who would later become astronauts, had reported UFO sightings during their days testing experimental planes. Beginning in the early 60s with the testing of the X-15 rocket-powered jet, 
there were some of the pilots in that program that came forward and said that part of their mission was to detect UFOs. It almost appears as if there was a window where the people that worked for NASA were able to talk more freely about the UFO subject, and today that doesn't appear to be the case. And according to many sources, one of those astronauts who reported seeing UFOs during those early days was space pioneer Gordon Cooper, both in his test pilot days and as a Mercury and Gemini astronaut. And he apparently worked hard to make sure his story was heard and believed. We're cruising at altitudes higher than any other living being has ever reached. And if some other living being is somehow managing to fly around on the edge of our atmosphere, well, it's our job to find out about it. Mr. Cooper, Mr. Cooper, Mr. Cooper, Mr. Cooper, Mr. Cooper what about the lack of oxygen? Gordon Cooper made a statement to the United Nations. He wrote a letter, said, I've seen UFOs. Uh, I think they're extraterrestrial, you know, and, and other people have seen them as well. And then, boom, you didn't hear from him for 15, 20 years about it. Why would Gordon Cooper fall silent about his encounters with UFOs? Was it simply because no one believed his story? It seems odd that such a well-trained observer and so skilled a pilot as Gordon Cooper could actually report a UFO sighting only to be largely ignored by the agency that had sent him out into space. Why would this brave explorer of the unknown suddenly stop talking about his UFO sightings? Many UFO researchers believe it was because Gordon Cooper and others were ordered to keep quiet that those orders came from NASA itself. NASA has even been found in the embarrassing position of ridiculing some of our own astronauts. When some of the guys get back from space and want to talk about what they've seen and what happened on the moon and what occurred while they were in orbit, NASA shuts them up, literally threatens them. Supposing for a moment that all of this is true, it would seem NASA first sent astronauts into the upper atmosphere and then into space where some of those pilots saw and reported encounters with UFOs. Then, suddenly, those astronauts stopped reporting such sightings. I know that I, when I first started researching UFOs, I wrote to NASA, I got the addresses for every American who'd ever been in space, and I wrote to them. I wrote to all of them, especially underlining uh, parts to, to those astronauts who had had alleged encounters in space, and I asked them, is it true? Not one single response. Uh, no, not, uh, not a letter back to say, you're crazy, leave me alone. No response at all. And I've spoken to people who've been in the space program. The response is, you're not supposed to talk about this stuff. There are numerous reports about uh, alleged encounters in space. Uh, the astronauts, to a, to a large degree, will not talk about it. NASA's status in the federal government allows them to enforce their policies with substantial power. NASA has regulations that they can send people to, to prison put them in quarantine indefinitely if, if there's been some sort of a contact with extraterrestrial objects or, or beings. Does NASA really have the power to silence astronauts who have seen a spaceship or being from another world? And if so, why? Is it not the stated mission of NASA to report whatever it finds in space, including any proof of extraterrestrial life? NASA's paranoid about UFOs or anything related to ET. You know, they had the SETI program, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, for a number of years. They changed the name of it uh, to something like High Resolution Survey because they didn't want ET in there, even though that's exactly what they're looking for. The space agency has never admitted to contact with an ET life form of any kind. But is it possible that the real truth has been hidden for decades? If NASA had strong supported evidence that our astronauts were encountering vehicles from another planet, why would this astounding news be kept secret? Why would an organization devoted to scientific discovery cover up its most important finding? Some scientists now believe the real reason is all too clear. I know it's been suggested that uh, our government and other governments have been denying or covering up uh, UFO evidence. If that's true, uh, it's uh, easy to understand. It could be that they are uh, trying to protect some advanced technology development that they're working on. So by maintaining a cover, uh, they're confusing, and, and that's part of uh, the game that governments sometimes have to play. But I think there may be another reason. And that is that if the phenomenon is real, 
and they know it's real, then they don't want to admit to the public that they can't protect us uh, from the phenomenon. Is NASA's silence on the matter of UFOs an attempt to cover up a threat posed by invaders from another world? Could the military missions taken on by the space shuttle be part of some secret war currently waged between humans and extraterrestrials? It seems incredible that the same agency that sent men to the moon in the name of science might also withhold information about those exploratory missions. But it might be easier to understand NASA drawing a veil of secrecy around the development of a secret weapon for the government. After all, it would not be the first time that the development of a military device has been hidden from the general public. Since NASA draws its personnel and technology largely from the military and has stated openly that it currently conducts secret military missions, could the space agency be protecting a secret about UFOs? A secret that the government armed forces do not want the general public to know. UFO researcher Robert Dean says there is no question that NASA is hiding the very same secret he discovered during his tour of duty in the NATO armed forces. When I arrived in Paris in 63, I was assigned to the Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers in Europe that I learned of a study that had been initiated in 1961. And the simple reason that they established this was that we and the Soviets had almost gone to war with each other at least a half a dozen times. And one of the reasons that we were having problems at that time in Europe was that large numbers of circular metallic objects were flying out of the Soviet sector over the Warsaw Pact areas. These objects would fly at a high altitude at a high rate of speed. Well, for a time, the Soviets thought that those objects belonged to us. And for a while, we even suspected that they might belong to the Soviets. But after a while, it became very clear to everybody that the technology that had been demonstrated repeatedly was so far beyond anything we and the Soviets had in 1961. So that left a big unanswered question is, who are these people? According to Dean, the government study concluded that UFOs were indeed extraterrestrial vehicles and that they commanded power so far in excess of our own that they could easily defeat us in any combat. Now, I have a feeling that certain members of our government know more about it than they've ever shared with the people. The lies that have been told to the American people in the last 50 years to keep the lid on this subject, it goes beyond the realm of absurdity. If the highest powers of world government were aware of extraterrestrial visitors in the early 1960s, it does seem logical that our first astronauts would have been somehow prepared for the beings that they might encounter out in space. So, did NASA begin a policy as early as the 1960s of denying any reports of UFOs, even if that report came from their own astronauts? According to a growing number of UFO researchers, it's not only astronauts whose reports are being suppressed, but even the findings of unmanned space probes as well. Strange features discovered by the Viking Mars probe have stirred controversy throughout the scientific community. And now, many researchers say NASA has deliberately hidden some of what it knows about these shapes on the Martian surface. Could this be because these structures are proof of a long extinct civilization on another world? Some people have speculated that um, NASA uh, is afraid that it'll lose funding if it uh, even so much as hints that it might imagine that there are extraterrestrial artifacts on Mars or elsewhere in the solar system. Many of the Martian features photographed by Viking do seem to be more than simple flukes of nature. But so far, no NASA official has admitted the possibility that these could be artifacts constructed by any kind of intelligent life form. But Stanley McDaniel has performed one of the most exhaustive studies possible on the photographs of the monuments of Mars and now believes there may be some at NASA who are not telling all they know. NASA scientists have made a series, you might call it a string, of bad arguments and a faulty reasoning regarding this topic and I believe that it deserves a serious look by serious scientists and there are some scientists who are looking at this seriously but NASA ignores them. Most of the controversy revolves around this photograph which appears to show a mile-long sculpture of a human face. 
NASA officials dismissed the appearance of the face, claiming that other images from the same area showed nothing of the kind. For over 17 years, NASA insisted there was a second photograph in which the face disappears, proving that the facial appearance was merely a trick of light and shadow. Actually, there was no such second photograph in which the face disappears, and NASA has recently admitted that this is the case. Could an agency dedicated to exploring other worlds really have deliberately concealed such a startling discovery? At first, it appeared that the world would soon learn the truth when the unmanned space probe Mars Observer approached the red planet for a closer look. But just as it was approaching Mars, the Observer stopped sending back images, apparently having suddenly malfunctioned. But some UFO researchers say that the Observer never stopped sending back images, but NASA has, for some reason, prevented the general public from seeing the results. Some even claim that NASA now routinely monitors the public broadcasts of all its space missions, just to keep the general public from seeing things NASA would prefer remain secret. The American people cannot sit down here and watch what's going on. There's a time delay, which will give the guys in the NASA control room time to edit something from the tape. If this is true, then it was a freak accident that allowed some surprising images from the space shuttle to be broadcast on American cable television. At present, the workhorse of the American space program is NASA's fleet of shuttles. These reusable vehicles have taken more men and women into Earth orbit than all the rest of the U.S. space programs combined. And on their satellite launch missions and trips to make repairs on damaged space hardware, the shuttles have beamed back to Earth thousands of hours of videotape of their journeys. Now UFO researchers are claiming that some of those videotapes show shocking proof of the reality of alien visitors to Earth. Oh, a couple of years ago, there was a, a shuttle flight where they apparently were filming something that was live. And uh, we got a whole bunch of them that uh, we're using for the SRO guys. And if you give me just a second, I'll show you the footage of the external tank. They had the cameras going, and something began to happen out there that ended up on the film and was also monitored by people on the ground who were listening and watching. At that time, video signals from NASA spacecraft were routinely transmitted to NASA Select, a cable television channel available in many parts of the United States. It was embarrassing for NASA because the people who were watching this thing live were seeing something that indicated that there was UFOs involved. Perhaps alien spaceships. And some space flight enthusiasts videotaped the broadcast, convinced that they had captured an encounter between the space shuttle and a UFO. But might there not be a more commonplace explanation for these strange images? Scientists at NASA studied the tape and explained that it shows nothing more than the kind of ice crystals that are formed when the shuttle dumps wastewater into the extreme cold of space. So, whenever these ice particles are caught in the path of the space shuttle's engine exhaust, their course of direction is significantly altered. Confident that Dr. Jack Kasher will come to the same conclusions that we have at NASA, that these were ice crystals and nothing more. I started with the, the assumption that these objects actually were ice particles, which is what the, the four NASA scientists said they were. A and in order to be accurate and scientific, I had to then prove that these objects really were ice crystals close to the shuttle. But I really couldn't do it. The, the angles were wrong, the speeds were wrong, and if they were ice particles, they would move in a way that's different from what was actually on the film. And once you rule out ice crystals or ice particles, then you don't have many more options. They can't be meteors because meteors don't change direction. And satellites and space junk don't change direction either. So the only option is that they were intelligently maneuvering craft out in space away from the shuttle. And now you only have two possibilities. They were either terrestrial or extraterrestrial in origin. I think we can rule out the fact that these were piloted by humans because if they were more than 10 miles away, which I think is fairly likely, then the accelerations that they underwent would absolutely flatten and crush a human pilot. If Dr. Kasher's analysis of the videotape is correct, and the object seen making such a dramatic reversal of course is a vehicle from another planet, 
then other features of the video take on a new and terrifying meaning. For example, what are these thin white streaks that seem to mark a line between a point on the ground and one of the UFOs? Certainly one possible interpretation is that these objects, these streaks, were missiles that were fired at the spacecraft. If they were missiles, then it's clear that the UFO uh, quickly changed direction and evaded them very, very easily. In the mid-1980s, the American military supposedly began work on orbiting weapons for the Strategic Defense Initiative, ostensibly to defend certain nations against nuclear missile attacks from other nations. Could the space shuttle video reveal that the real purpose of SDI was not to defend Earth's people from each other, but to try to defend them from a threat outside of this world? The film that Don Ratch captured from NASA Select shows what it appears to show, then I think we have a strong indication that the extraterrestrials are visiting the Earth. And someone might be shooting at them, and if so, they are easily evading these very advanced weapons. Is this the secret that some researchers claim NASA has hidden? That our world is at war with beings from another planet? The evidence presented by a small group of UFO researchers may seem insufficient cause for making accusations against such an esteemed organization as NASA. But what if the claims these researchers make are true? Is it possible that NASA really has withheld information of vital importance, kept secrets from the people who have funded and supported their work? And if so, why? Could it be that they fear a panic would ensue if people believed we were at war with beings from another world? The videotape does seem to suggest that uh, there is some kind of advanced weaponry being used up there. There's another video taken on the same shuttle mission that shows a number of strange moving objects. And it's clear from the, the camera motion that NASA is tracking one of them closely. A close-up of one of these objects shows that it's got a triangular or delta shape, uh, very much like the shape that has been described by UFO witnesses on the ground. There certainly appear to be uh, a number of interesting objects up in the sky, and NASA is aware of this and clearly tracked at least one of them. Are the skies over our heads filled with potentially hostile UFOs? Is it possible that once in outer space, no one could ever again deny the existence of UFOs? It does seem that space shuttle cameras are constantly capturing UFOs on tape, presumably because there are so many of them flying around over the Earth. This image, for example, was apparently captured by a shuttle mission over 10 years ago. And this one was taken later on the same mission. And what are these objects photographed from a shuttle in March 1994? They seem to cross tremendous distances in far less time than is possible with any human technology. And now it appears that NASA has stopped its public transmission of images from outer space, apparently as a result of these space shuttle videotapes. After NASA went through gymnastics, explaining that away, lying through their teeth, they changed the policy. There is no longer live telecasts from shuttle launches. Why? Why would the space agencies send people and machines out to explore the unknown, but then keep their findings a secret? It's possible that the real truth is the result of a study commissioned by NASA in the early 1960s. NASA had asked the Brookings Institute, essentially, to come up with some dis decisions and some thoughts and some comments about the implications in the future of what would happen if we were to discover and learn the reality of extraterrestrial intelligence. Many people believe that this study is the basis of the UFO cover-up because it indicates that uh, contact with an advanced civilization could lead to the, the destruction of our social institutions. In fact, that Brookings Institute study warned that throughout human history, various cultures have disintegrated when they had to associate with previously unfamiliar societies. I can't be 100% sure that there is a bona fide cover-up and that there's a big dark secret that the United States government is trying to cover up. But if there were, it's my opinion that it would have to do with the status quo and how disrupted 
our social institutions would be if all of a sudden we were told that we're not alone and that these beings are more advanced than us. Will we ever really know how much or how little our space agency knows about extraterrestrial visitors? Perhaps someday soon the answer will become clear. Or perhaps it will forever be one of the many unanswered questions in the UFO Diaries.